this is a continuation of part two on faith is not a work with evidence through scriptures. And this one I'm going to start in Philippians 1.27. Paul says, only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ. I'll stop right there. That's at the beginning of 27. Your conduct is worthy of the gospel of Christ in that you believe. If you believe something, you will act accordingly. So he's not saying make sure you obey the law, make sure you find these religious commands and sacraments that always do them. He's saying that if you believe in the gospel of Christ, your conduct will be such and such. That's the way it works with anything. If you believe that your car is going to start, you act differently than if you believe it's not going to start. Well, if you believe that your God and Savior, Jesus Christ, gave himself for you to take away your sins and so that he could then offer you his life in such a way that you would never lose it, you would never lose his life, and you really believe that, you will conduct yourself in a certain way. You won't just go off and sin. So people who abuse that, people say, oh, now i got a license to sin and I can do whatever I want because God forgave me. They don't really believe it because they don't even understand it. They don't know what it is. They can do that, but that's to their own destruction because they don't know God. Because being made alive to Christ comes through faith. And then you know Him and then He dwells in you. God isn't going to dwell in someone who doesn't believe in Him just because they say some, some sinner's prayer or something. That's not how it works. But... Again, it goes to the personal nature of who our Creator is. He is the only one, besides each individual one of us, who's actually going to know who really believes in Him. I have opinions, I'm sure we all do, and that's okay, but only our God and Creator, Jesus Christ, and each individual one He saves, they're the only two that really know who is saved. So I'll start that again. Only let your conduct be worthy of the Gospel of Christ, you know, show that, you know, live like you believe. Just live as a one dependent on your God. So that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Yes, strive together for the faith of the gospel. Lift each other up. But what are we striving for? The faith of the gospel, to, tr to learn how to trust in your God and Savior and His finished work. It doesn't say strive for obedience strive for a better mastery of the law or any of that. You strive for the faith of the gospel. You strive to understand it better, to believe it better. How do you do that? You do that by getting to know your God. That's how that happens. It forces you, not in a religious way, but just it, it compels you to want to know this one. Once you understand what was done on your behalf, who that was on that cross, that he did that. Your creator himself came and gave himself for you. Once you get to understand that, the more you get to understand that, you can't help but be compelled to want to know who that person is more. Even if it's just meditating, dwelling on him, it doesn't have to manifest as you running a church or being a big Bible study teacher or any of that stuff. It just means that you will draw closer to him because you want to know this one who saved your mortal soul and gave you immortality. And not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them a proof of perdition, but to you of salvation and that from God. So he's just basically saying that people that are going to attack you, they, they prove their own destination, their own doom, and they kind of prove your salvation. Because why would they be attacking you if, unless they knew that you had this salvation? They want to rob you from it. And the, the most common one, I have to say it, is church people to try to say you can lose your salvation. These are quite often, not always necessarily, but quite often the adversaries, because the world doesn't really care. The world doesn't care if you're saved or you think you're saved or you're not, because they don't even believe in salvation. Your adversaries are those who try to tell you that you are dirty, that, that you are guilty, that you are someone who can lose your salvation. Well, if you can lose eternal salvation, it's not only not eternal, it's not really salvation. Because if it's incumbent upon you and your behavior and your obedience, then, then you're your own Savior. That's how that works. For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in Him, but also to suffer for His sake. So that's been granted to us through our faith. Not, he's not making us suffer. It's just the way the world functions. You're going to suffer. It's just what are you suffering for? You're going to suffer for your flesh? You're going to suffer for your religion? Or are you going to suffer because... To trust in Christ means to re be rejected by basically the, the world, whether it's the churchy world or the world that rejects God and the church and all of it. 
and I'll finish that one right there and move on to the next one.